What's good, everybody? This is Brian Mazik. I'm coming to you with another episode of Ask FP. You guys had a lot on your minds this time around. So I don't have a lot of time to play around. I got to jump right into these questions. And my man, Matt Price, is back with the feature question of this particular week. He said on Twitter he was going to come back for a spot. And here he is. He says, who are your top five wrestling heels of all time obviously rest in peace to Roddy Piper uh, I got a question about him a little bit later on he is in my top five but number one is heel version of Randy Savage awesome number two is gotta be the heel version of Ric Flair okay then we got Jake the Snake Roberts Roddy Piper and a heel version of The Undertaker those are my top five heels in, in wrestling history now, Noah Jensen says, is Roy Halladay a future Hall of Famer? And if so, is he a first ballot Hall of Famer? You can definitely make a, a case for him as a first ballot Hall of Famer. I do think he gets in. I think he gets in Craig BGO style, maybe on a third try. I mean, you got two Cy Youngs, I think maybe three years Um as a 20 game winner he only won like 203 games I think it is or 205 something somewhere in there so but 300 wins isn't like the magical number anymore because guys just don't pitch that long but I do think how and you know I think you look at people like Pedro Martinez which is clearly an indication that you don't have to have 300 wins you just need to dominate in your era and I, and I do think Halliday did that but not quite on Pedro's level so I don't think he's the first ballot guy Shaheen Atkinson says how good do you think the Pistons could have been if they drafted Melo or Wade instead of Darko in 03. Dynasty? Well, uh, Melo, no. No, because Melo's not a winner in my eyes. He's a good player, but he's not a winner. He's not a guy that changes the franchise. Now, Dwayne Wade is a guy who changes the franchise. He changed the Miami Heat franchise. And I think if they draft him instead of Darko, you're looking at something altogether different and special in Motown. Simon Torve Sunland with the seriousness says, do you think there should be more emphasis on personal economy in schools? Example, some athletes with money equal bankrupt. Uh, I think there should be uh, definitely uh, uh, an emphasis on personal economy and it goes beyond just athletes, just people, period. We just as a people, you know, and I mean as a human race, don't generally um, know how to manage our money properly. I mean, there's a lot of things out there now teaching people how to you know, better take care of their money. We just have to, you know, take heed to the good advice that we're given and, and that sort of thing. Uh, you hold fast to that, which is good, you know. So then Simon Torve Sutherland also says, which athlete do you get the best impression of off the field of court? For me, Russell Wilson seems like a great guy. Russell Wilson does seem like a good guy. I actually had an opportunity to interview him. Um, you know, he was <laughs> kind of dry that day. I don't know. You know, people have bad days or whatever it is. But to be totally honest with you, uh, Simon, the, the most pleasant athletes that I've ever had a chance to meet, and I've met a ton of them, are the WWE superstars. Ne I mean, I don't know if I've ever met a WWE superstar that not only was they, were they not rude, they just weren't generally pleasant, period. So I think that's really, you know, saying something. Those guys get that this is absolutely customer service, and every, con every time you talk to somebody, it is. So uh, Unstoppable says, why do you think quarterbacks who aren't ready to start week one are rushed into the starting job immediately? Um, it's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of reasons. Um, you have teams and fan bases that are putting pressure, that, you know, to apply pressure for a team to win right now. Uh, a, a guy who goes number one, a, a big-time quarterback that goes number one, they, there's a significant investment placed in that guy. So you, those teams want to return on investment quicker, uh, you know, sooner rather than later. They want to know, do I have the real deal or did we just make a mistake? So because of those pressures, guys are pushed into plan, sometimes maybe before they're ready. Unstoppable also says, which current young NFL player is a first ballot Hall of, Hall of Famer? I think it is Andrew Luck. Uh, well, the first one that comes to my mind, even before Luck, is J.J. Watt. I mean, Watt's only 26 years old. He's already had two seasons with 20 sacks. I believe in the last three seasons, he has 51 and a half sacks. I mean, whoa. I mean, yeah. He's got, I mean, I think he's unquestionably the, uh, the, the most dominant defensive player in the, in, in the NFL right now. It's got to be J.J. Watt. 
Ty Bud says, what uh, do you think about the 49ers this season? We've been gutted, and the loss of Willis and Gore hurts. How will we fare? Um, I do think that the 49 I think the 49ers are going to go one of two ways. You're going to see, I'm sorry, I hit the mic. There it is. You're going to see the 49ers either completely fall apart, and the excuse or the reason, I should say, is going to be, uh, the, all of the turnover, coaching change, or you're going to see them really rally and put together a surprising season, and they're going to be one of the stories of the NFL this year because of how they have uh, persevered uh, through a tough off season, and you know something like a nine and seven, ten and six, and a wild card position, wild card spot. Either one of those two scenarios, I think, is what's going to happen. Now, Jalen Murray says, how many years do you think Tiger Woods has left in his career? I'm going to tell you, Jalen, you almost got Matt Price for the number one question with this one. You know, I really don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I, I, I thought about this. I said, if I could have one particular thing happen in sports this year, you know, what thing would that be? That would have to, ha have to happen in the calendar year of 2015. Obviously, I'd love to see a Cubs World Series. But really, really close to that would be Tiger Woods winning the PGA Championship. I, man, as a sports fan, I want that so much. But I really don't know, man. Uh, it's that's a, I, very rarely do I just not have an answer. I don't know, you know. Don King says, "Do you think that Andre Robeson from Oklahoma City has the potential to be the next Bruce Bowen from the Spurs' first championship?" I think he's similar to Bruce Bowen because he totally embraces the defensive aspect of the game and him being a, uh, that being his specialty. But I don't, uh, he's a lot more athletic than Bruce Bowen was. So I think he may have a little bit more to him. Same way with uh, KJ McDaniels for the Houston Rockets. I think both of those guys are similar. They totally get it and embrace their role, which is what makes them valuable, in my opinion. Connor Massey also says, uh, how, do you, how did you first get started? Get, how did you first start getting into writing? Um, well, it's weird because I was working for a, a cell phone company. And I lost my job. And, you know, I always loved sports or whatever. I always thought I was a pretty decent writer. So I applied to Bleach Report. They accepted. Started off. I was uh, just writing kind of when I wanted to. And uh, one of the NBA guys took notice of me. And uh, he said, hey, I want to bring you in. You know, write for the NBA. And I, saw, I started writing on that a little bit. Uh, then uh, they gave me something to write on the weekends. Then they formed this team called the Breaking News Team. And I tried out for that. And I made it. Um, it's been some tough times here and there. Uh, first, you know, like I said, I was just writing on the weekends. Then I was, you know, writing full time, and, and you know, here I am. You know, so it's been a blessing. Absolutely, been a blessing to do something that I like to do anyway. Connor Massey also says, "Do you think that Detroit Tigers will fire Brad Ausmus at the end of the season?" I do. I do think so. Uh, I know. I know Miguel Cabrera has been hurt. I know uh, Justin Verlander has been hurt. And he's not the guy he used to be. But you still had David Price, and I, you know, I know they lost Max Scherzer, but you still have a, had a very potent lineup. And I think, you know, a telltale sign is trading David Price and Jonas Cespedes. Detroit is like whatever. They, they, I think they're ready to push reset, and I think that includes Fire and Brad Ausmus. Franchise Gaming says, do you think that Kevin Durant will be in uh, a Thunder jersey next season? Uh, I think you mean after this coming season um, when he becomes a free agent. Um, I do think he's going to leave. I think he's going to leave. Um, I think that LeBron has done, LeBron pioneered the whole thing of leaving the, the, the original team. And I don't think fans are going to react to quite the same way that they did when he left. And I think guys are just better able to handle it now because LeBron took those shots for the people, you know, who, who, you know, so now you know what it's going to be like and guys are more prepared when you leave your first team. Ben, uh, ben says, thoughts on Wilmer Flores crying. So this is the New York Mets infielder who was traded or thought he was traded for Carlos Gomez before the trade didn't go through. He's on the field and he's crying, you know, emotional about it. He's a young player. Uh, and, you know, for whatever reason, he was attached to the Mets organization and didn't want to go. So I understand that aspect of it, but it is a business, and you gotta, you know, you, you, this is part of the game, and that probably won't happen to him ever again. Unstoppable says, "What are your thoughts on the N-word being thrown around in our society, with all the history behind the word?" 
uh, I, I'm not a fan of the word, uh, no matter who uses it, black, white, whatever. Um, I don't like when I see like a lot of you know younger people, you know, with their friends of, you know, no matter what race. But it, I will say, especially when there's other people of other races and they're allowing people to call them that, and it's like, oh no, it's cool. It's not cool, really, in my opinion. It's just not cool, which is why I don't use it. But you know, it is what it is. There was a time in my life that I did. I don't do it anymore. So that's a lot of times what we do. You know, you kind of grow up and you change sometimes. You know, so that's. This is my take on it. Uh, Matt Price also has another question. He says, who had the better rookie year, Kurt Angle or Brock Lesnar? I think it was Brock. Uh, Kurt Angle had an interesting rookie year, made the, you know his appearance on Sunday Night Heat and came out of the stands. But you remember, Kurt had a hard time grabbing on because he initially was put out there as like a face. But he wasn't accepted, you know, the you suck chants and stuff was going on. So I think Brock found his niche quicker. And I, so I think that he became the next big thing quicker, you know, in my opinion. I know he had to get hooked up with Paul Heyman, but I think he still made a bigger I made it and made an impact quicker. Matt Price says, could you see Tom Brady finishing his career with a new team like Montana Favre and Manning did? Um, I could because Tom loves the game and I can see him wanting to play so long to the point that the Patriots have to do business and the Patriots are like hey you know it's time to move on we got to be proactive and the Patriots do seem like the type of organization who are going to do business not going to be any friends it's going to do business and if Tom wants to play maybe three more you know past two to three more years I could see it happening. Weston Flores says, who are the winners and losers from this year's MLB trade deadline? For me, the winners are Astros and the losers are Braves. Um, the winners, to me, uh, I do think I do like what the Astros did. To me, the biggest losers are the Blue Jays. Uh, they made some big splashes, but I don't think the Blue Jays are going to make the playoffs. So I think they literally gave away, especially for David Price, because you're absolutely renting him. At least with Troy Tulowitzki, you have him under team control for, uh, I, don't, uh, I think it's like 2020 or something like that, maybe even longer. So I understand that trade, you know, because you, you know, you, I mean, he's one of the best shortstops in the world. But the David Price thing, especially, I just, I just, I didn't think it was a smart trade. Um, so I know they needed pitching, but to just get a, a rental for what they had to give up, I don't, I didn't like it. Weston Flores also says, is Justin Upton still an elite baseball player? I don't know if he was ever an elite baseball player. I think he's a very good baseball player, but I don't know if I would categorize him as elite. Maybe I just don't throw that word around as, 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 uh, as freely, but um, I don't think he was ever elite, just a good player, and I do think he's still a good player. Weston Flores also says, when Daniel Bryan returns, should the WWE consider putting him in a tag team? They could do that, but to be honest, it, it depends on how long he's gone. Because if Daniel Bryan was to come back in the next month or two, he's still so relevant that putting him in a tag team just would not work. The only way I think it works with you putting him in a tag team is if he doesn't come back to sometime like this time next year. Then there will be enough people that have pushed him to the background or whatever. Well, he'll be a you know you got to take him off TV altogether, you know because. You know, just uh, or maybe not. Maybe you keep him on TV and you just kind of let it get dull, and then you can bring him back. I don't know. I, I it, that's tough though. That's a tough situation. You have to see the climate of the WWE when he's ready to come back. Devin Martinez says, "Who do you uh, have winning the AL wild card spots?" Love the vids. Appreciate that, Devin. Uh, I have uh, winning the wild card the Angels and the Minnesota Twins. I really didn't think the Twins were going to make the playoffs at one point, but they have stayed, you know, steady and Paul Molitor has them playing good baseball. So, I think they're a wild card team. Uh Unstoppable is back. He says, "In your opinion, what is Rowdy Roddy Piper's greatest single moment of his career?" Rest in peace, Roddy Piper. Uh he has a you know, he has some he has some cool ones. He has some not so cool ones too that people are conveniently forgetting because he just passed away, like the half blackface thing that he did when he fought Bad News Brown. That wasn't cool. Uh, you know what I'm saying? But I, you know, I really like the boxing match with Mr. T. Um, 
the coconut thing with Jimmy Superfly Snooker, which some people could parlay off as being racist too, but it, you know, it definitely was a, a memorable, funny moment. Uh, he's had so many promos that were memorable. So, uh, but I would probably say the boxing match is my favorite because it was just so different and cool. Uh, and you know, I thought that was awesome. I think, and it's, I believe it's WrestleMania 2 for if you guys want to see it. I think I'm, here's the WrestleMania 2. I think it's WrestleMania 2. Or is it 3? It's one of them. That one, though. Uh, Zachary says, should Undertaker versus Brock be the main event of SummerSlam? And also, who wins? I think that... I think that Brock wins by disqualification because Sting comes to the ring and attacks the Undertaker or either distracts him and it sets up them to fight at Wrestlemania. That's what I think. That crazy? I don't know. That's what I think. Zachary also says, should Kim Shamrock, could, she, could blah, blah, blah. should Ken Shamrock be in the WWE Hall of Fame? All of that tongue twisting for me to say no. I don't think, I, I think he had a decent little run, but he's not a Hall of Famer. Not, not based off the WWE, you know, maybe it's because he's just famous and he was in the WWE, but no, not to me. Samuel says, better trio, Mike Trout, Nolan Arenado, uh, Arenado, Jose Fernandez, or Bryce Harper, Manny Machado, Matt Harvey. For me, I would take Harper, Machado, Harvey, because... Both Fernandez and Harvey have had the had you know Tommy John. Uh, I would take Machado over Aaron. Hmm. I don't know, cause I'd take Trout over Harper, but then I'd take Machado over Arenado. And you know what? Maybe I'll go the other way because I kind of think that healthy Jose Fernandez is more unhittable than than Harvey. So I'll go that way. Godspeed says, hypothetical fight. And I, I'm not sure what DSG means. I think you're talking about Danny Swift Garcia. So Terrence Crawford versus uh, Danny Garcia, who wins? Omar Figueroa versus Broner, who wins? Also, who, who, you, who you think got the best chin in boxing? Okay, I think Crawford destroys Garcia. Uh, I think Figueroa-Broner is a really, really interesting fight. But I'm gonna t I think Broner wins that fight. I think Broner wins that fight. Uh, Figueroa has never really impressed me. He does have a great chin, but I think Broner beats him off of him, and I think that Figueroa is not a natural 140 guy, even though I know he struggled to make weight at 135. So I think Broner wins that fight. And the best chin in boxing to me is Julio Cesar Chavez. I know he got knocked down by Fonfaro, but and he doesn't do very much well, but he does have a chin. So... I think he has the best chin that I that, that I can currently think of. Godspeed also says, who is the better who has the better season, Dak Prescott or Golston, Ever Golston uh, at uh, uh, FSU? And also, do you think Dak has a future in the NFL as a quarterback? I don't think Dak's a quarterback in the NFL. I don't. I mean, I could be wrong. He could develop, but I think Golston has a better season than him. Uh, I just I like Golston a little bit better. Jovan Radovanovic says, Sarvania Zvezda just picked up Sophocles Shortsianitis. Do you think he'll be able to replace Bobby Mahanovic? Uh, I don't think so. I think that Shortsianitis, you know, I remember, man, it felt like it's like maybe 12, 13 years ago. I don't, it may not have been that long. They would call him the Greek Shack. But now he's up there in age. Uh, he's an undersized center, even though he's huge, I mean, wide and everything. I don't think he. I don't think he can be as effective around the basket uh, defensively or offensively as uh, Boban. So that's me. Brandon Knowles says, what does Misha Tate have to do so that she won't lose to Ronda for a third time? Uh, she need a tag team partner. That's pretty much what she needs. No, I mean, I don't think it's going to be the same type of blowout as we've seen in Ronda's last three fights, even though I think Ronda probably, that'll be her rallying cry because Ronda has to find something to motivate herself in every single fight now so i think this one's going to be i want to stop i want to stop misha in the first round even though she already did that back in strike force but i think she's got to find motivation somewhere and i think that's what she does at this time brandon no also says do you think that uh new will get news about ea sports ufc at gamescom on wednesday so that's tomorrow uh i don't 
I don't know. I know we found out that they're going to be play testing for it, or they play tested for it already. I didn't even see any information about what people said, or the, they were probably they probably had to sign, you know, not in uh, NDAs to not talk about what they did or saw or, or whatever. But I don't know. It might. It feels like it might be a little bit early. I, you know, it feels like it might be a little bit early. So I, I'm gonna say no. But you know, you never know. Brandon also says, when uh, do T.J. Dillashaw and Dominic Cruz fight? I think February. Oh, uh, I don't know if it's going to be that long, but it, it might have to be because we don't know when Dominic is going to be ready. I did here at the beginning of the year. Here's the thing. T.J. just fought here in July, so that would leave him on the shelf for about seven months. Does he want to sit for seven months? And seeing the UFC is not like boxing. He's not going to be able to pick an opponent and say, hey, I'll just beat up this guy just to keep busy. So does he take another fight, you know, which is going to be a relatively difficult one or, you know, at least. I mean, because we don't really know how how smoking. T Maybe he just has Burrell's number. You know what I mean? So we don't know if this next fight will be easy for him or not. So uh, it, that's going to be interesting. I think February is a good day, but we don't know if TJ will take a fight in between there. Brandon Noel also says the Lawler versus Condit and Hendricks versus Woodley make more sense than Lawler versus Hendricks three and Condit versus Woodley two. I think I think Lawler versus Hendricks three and Condit versus Woodley two makes more sense because yeah, Condit got hurt, uh, he tore his knee in the fight, but he still lost the fight, so I don't think he should be thrown right up there to a championship just yet. Hendricks. Hendrix uh, 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 Woodley makes sense, but I think it makes more sense to have Woodley take on Condon to, you know, kind of settle things and then have the winner of that fight face the winner of Lawler Hendrix 3. That makes more sense to me. And last but not least, Crash says, what NFL team, NFL team do you see surprising people this year? By the way, if you don't finish your 2K16 my career, we throwing them in my hands. I'm getting threats. I'm getting threats out here. But NFL team, do I see surprises? You might say I'm, I'm, I'm Homer or whatever, but I do think the Bears are going to be better than people expect. Is it a playoff team? Probably not. But nine, I put it like this: eight and eight, nine and seven. If Cutler is normal, Cutler. If Cutler happens to have a good year, I think ten and six, eleven and five is possible. And then they are a playoff team at that point, uh, more than likely. So uh, that's that. And as far as the 2K16 my career, man, I actually have a real, uh, I think, a solid plan for approach this year with games moving forward. So I'm going to come with it. I'm going to do the best I can. But I do appreciate you guys watching. This was a long episode of Ask FP. I tried to move as fast as I could. God bless and peace.